The last time I talked about NFTs was eight months ago, and since then, a lot of ridiculous stuff has happened. For example, this JPEG of a rock sold for more than $1.5 million. This JPEG of a crypto punk was sold for more than $532 million in a sale that was actually fake. We're gonna talk about it later. And this JPEG of a monkey was sold for more than $3.4 million. Companies like Visa are also jumping on the hype train by paying more than 100 grand for another JPEG. NHN is going to release a NFT-powered global video game on the first half of the next year. And directors like Quentin Tarantino are going to release scenes from the movie Pulp Fiction that nobody has seen before and also the handwritten script from the movie as an NFT. If the idea of a JPEG of a rock being sold for $1.5 million sounds dumb, to you or if paying more than three millions from a jpeg is something you will consider stupid then you are not alone you are not out of the trend many people including me would agree with you but before we dismiss nfts altogether because of the news headlines that make the industry sound like a pump and dump money laundering scheme let's actually explore what are the brands people and teams that are using nfts to bring value and innovate in the world Nicolas Imida, and in today's video, I'm gonna make a case against and pro NFTs as a blockchain developer. Before we get started, let's do a recap of what an NFT is. NFT means non fungible token. Fungibility is when an object can be exchanged for another object of its same kind without losing value. Like, for example, money. If I have a dollar here and a dollar here and I exchange them, the value stays the same. Non fungible is the opposite. Your house and my house, or your pet and my pet, cannot be exchanged and keep the same economic or emotional value. Now, a token is just a record on a database. The database in this case is a blockchain, which is a public database keeping track of who owns what. This is, of course, an oversimplification of the whole thing. If you want a deeper explanation into blockchain, NFTs, tokens, and all that stuff, then please check out the 10-part series that we did on this channel on crypto earlier this year. So to recap, an NFT is just a token that is unique and that is not interchangeable with any other token. This token lives on a blockchain, which keeps track of who is the owner of the token as well as who has owned the token before. So what NFTs allow you to do that wasn't possible before is to prove the ownership of a digital asset. And with this in mind, let's talk about the biggest use case for NFTs right now, and that is the art market. NFTs, as we know, are just records on a database, but also, if you want to, you can attach metadata to them. So for example, you can attach a link to an image. So whoever is buying the NFT is not actually buying an image. What they're doing is they're putting themselves as the owner of some data that has a link to an image. This is what you will see when you go to the biggest NFT marketplace called OpenSea. There, you can create and buy NFTs. To create one, all you have to do is fill up a form, add an image file, set the price, and pay the transaction fees, and you are done. First question, is the NFT image file only visible to the person that buys it? The answer is no. Anyone can see the file. Now, second question, can anyone, not only the owner, save that image file, doing right-click, save as, on their computer? Yes, yes, they can. Can anybody take that image, create another NFT and resell it? Yes, yes they can. Also, and remember, when you buy an art NFT, you're not buying an image file. What you're buying is data that has a link to the image file. So if for some reason that link dies and returns 404, then nobody can help you because that's on the blockchain and it cannot be edited later. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, what is the point of buying an art NFT? If you don't have to pay to see, anyone can download the art and they can even resell the art. Then why would you pay? One reason could be that you want to support the artist and you want to give them money, like a donation. But still, in this case, you might send money to someone reselling the JPEGs and not the real creator. Or another reason why people pay is not because of the art, but because of the provenance. Provenance is the chain of ownership of a work of art. In the offline art world, if a painting has been owned by somebody famous or important, that is going to increase the price of the art piece the next time it goes on sale. And this is what NFTs are really good for. NFTs, because they're on the blockchain, allow us to keep track of all the owners of that NFT all the way to the source. This basically enables us to have some sort of digital autographs of famous people. Just like, for example, a writer can publish a book but only sign 10 copies. 
Now this signed copy has the same content as an unsigned copy, but as we know, the signed copy is going to have a higher value because it has the autograph of the creator. NFTs allow us to verify these autographs in the digital world. But to pull this off, there has to be somebody famous behind the NFT project, and that is not actually what is happening right now. Right now, people or teams are creating NFT projects or limited collections and paying influencers to hype the project up in hopes of becoming viral and then selling their JPEGs for as much money as possible. And there is another group of people that maybe have never gone to an exhibition or bought real offline art that are trying to find these projects to buy the NFTs when they are very early and very young. So if it becomes viral and it goes up, they can cash out. Of course, they are real artists and real collectors on the space, but as you can imagine, if you can make money in a very easy way with little skill, little effort and anonymously, that is going to attract the wrong kind of people. Even Gary V, who is a very big NFT influencer and whom we will talk about later, said that he wishes that people stop the hypocrisy around NFTs right now and accept that most people on this space are just trying to flip NFTs for profit and don't really care about the art part of the equation, which is also fine. It's also fine to do it for the money, but it's because of this that the industry looks like a pump and dump for outsiders. Before you change the channel and decide that NFTs are a scam, remember that I'm trying to make a case against NFTs and now we're going to move on to the case pro NFTs. I personally believe that using NFTs for art is not the most fun and creative usage of NFTs. But remember that in the offline art world, apart from money laundering and tax avoidance, people buy art also because they want to stroke their ego. They want to show status. They want to show how much money they have. They want to show how good taste they have. And it can be the same in the online world with NFTs. According to some news and some demos, Twitter is going to allow you to show your NFT collection in a new collectible tab in your profile. You will also be able to change your profile photo to an NFT that is in your collection. And Twitter will put a blockchain verified check mark on the profile picture as well. Now this changes everything because instead of paying for a JPEG that doesn't do anything, now you will pay for a JPEG that will be showcased on your Twitter profile photo that nobody else can have. Now imagine if more companies did this. What if Instagram did the same thing with their profile photos or what if I was able to use the NFT that I bought as a filter for my stories? Humans love these status games. People are already paying to increase their Instagram or YouTube subscriber number. Even though they are bot accounts, they just want to show the numbers grow. Now imagine what would it be like if people were able to display their art and good taste on their social media profiles. This news from Twitter make me very bullish in the NFT art market. Imagine if Elon Musk changes his profile photo to an NFT of an artist that you also own. Or what if you are the artist and because the NFT is on the blockchain, we can trace who is the creator of this artwork and suddenly your art becomes more valuable because of that. As you can see, NFTs just by themselves, just as a link to a JPEG doesn't sound that exciting. But NFTs combined with other things like social networks or as we will see on the next video, combined with real people or anchored to an offline experience or a brand have limitless possibilities. So I will see you on the next video where we are going to talk about how athletes, brands, creators and especially games are using NFTs. We're also going to see how the NFT from Tarantino is going to be very different from all the other NFTs that you have heard of. And of course, we're going to find out what happened with the $532 million NFT sale that involved real money that actually happened, but it was at the end kind of fake. That's it for this video. If you want to see part two and if you like this kind of content, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me comments. Tell me what you think about NFTs. Have I changed your mind? Do you think I made a good argument? against and pro NFTs. I will see you on the next video where we're going to explore other uses of NFT that I think are actually super exciting to us. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one. Stay happy, stay free, eat kimchi, ham samida, see you on the next one. Bye bye.